Hello and welcome to The Report, Cal State Fullerton's premier source for news, views, and info. I'm Alyssa Ruiz. I'm Shannon McKercher. And I'm Leslie Duarte. So ladies, Halloween is coming up. Any plans, any outfits ready? Honestly, I have no idea. Usually I'm like ready two months. I order my costume online, but this year they're probably all going to be sold out by the time I think about it. Yeah, just with midterms and everything, it's gotten kind of hectic and I haven't had time to think about it. And it's on a Tuesday this year, yeah. so it's like, you know, school night. But I think I want to be a Dodger player because they made the yeah. World Series. Yes. I'm a huge fan, so I'm real excited. Yes. Want to rep my team. Yeah, I think I'll just put on the dress and some type of headpiece and just figure it out and pretend I'm that, you know, not too much. But on today's episode, we'll be bringing you the latest report on free speech on college campuses. Plus, we'll be discussing the Boy Scouts of America and their recent decision to admit girls into one of their programs. And finally, we'll be bringing you some of the latest on CSUF and local news. All this and more on another week's episode of The Report. Before we delve into our first hot topic, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the discussion this semester season. Click on the link in the caption of any of our report episodes to fill out a secure Google form with your opinion on any controversial topic that we've talked about now or in the past, as many of these issues are reoccurring and evolving, ranging from gun control to abortion, climate change, and the state of politics right now. All we ask is that you please keep it civil. Conflicts of free speech on college campuses have arised as protesters disturbed a white supremacist speech at the University of Florida on October 19th. Richard Spencer is a leading figure in the white nationalist movement. In August, he organized a white nationalist rally that led to a deadly violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. His appearance led to governor of Florida to declare a state of emergency. Florida University officials said they plan to spend $500,000 on security as they were worried his speech would draw violence. As public institution, the University of Florida is prohibited from stopping the event based on the contents and views of the speech. Cal State Fullerton will also see a similar controversy, as on October 31st, Yiannopoulos, a right-wing commentator known for his views on subjects like homosexuality and feminism, is scheduled to deliver a speech on campus. While CSUF students hold mixed views about Yiannopoulos' appearance, Students for Quality Education, SQE, has been the strongest opposition. SQE will be hosting an all-day event named, quote, Unity Block Party dash CSUF Stands Against Hate, end quote on the day of Yiannopoulos talk. So ladies, huge controversy here. Um, some people oppose it, some people don't, some people really strong supporters of him. Should the First Amendment, should there be a fine line between the First Amendment and hate speech? Yes, I definitely think so. Hate speech um, is speech expressing hatred on a particular group of people. Now we are at a time in our country where people have become very sensitive and emotional um, and they're quick to judge, you know, everything. But at the end of the day, hate speech is not right and will never be right. It is not okay to, to speak hate on a group of people you feel inferior to, a group of people you may not like. In what person's mind is that okay? Well, can you define what hate speech is, though? Hate speech is subjective. I want to bring us to the First Amendment of the Constitution, which says Congress shall pass no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or the of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So the beginning, Congress shall pass no law. You Obviously, hate speech is wrong, and we can all agree up here that it's it's not right. But you being offended by something, and if I say oh, I don't like this and that, I the government can't tell me that I'm wrong, and I can't I shouldn't be punished for saying standing up for what I believe in. So, Shannon, what does uh, the First Amendment um, interpret? What do you interpret the First Amendment to be? I mean, 
like it says right there, Congress shall pass no law for respecting an establishment of religion. So just because I don't agree with what someone says about a religion, a race, gender, or sexuality, if I don't agree, it doesn't mean that they don't have the right to speak it. And we're lucky in this country that we have the right. We have the most freedom of speech in America. You can't go to China, North Korea, go try to speak how you really feel. You can't. And I think that we should be fortunate enough. And I don't think it's right. I think it's disgusting how people can stand and bash on people that have disabilities bash on someone for the color of their skin. I think it's disgusting. However, it's their right. Just because we don't agree doesn't mean that it that it, they shouldn't be able to say that. So there was a case, uh, the Brand, Brandberg versus Ohio case, where this was brought up. It was a leader of the national um, KKK movement where he was um, basically told that as long as your speech, whether it's hate speech or whatever kind of speech, does not incite for direct call exactly. of action against violence to a right. certain group, then it's okay. So they can stand up there and exactly. say whatever they want, but as long as they don't say, you need to go out and hurt these people or this group, or they're then they're, it's okay. Or which they're is, specifically threatening, like, I'm going to go kill these people. You can't say that. Just as you can't say, bomb on an airplane, you'll get arrested. Alyssa, but what do you have to say? why should we let it get to that point, you know, where, where there needs to be a call to action? Why do we want hate, you know, in our country? I understand it's their right, and, and at the end of the day, people, you know, they're allowed to say what they want, but that doesn't make it right. It's not, but that's also subjective. What could offend someone may not offend someone else. So we're going to tell these people they can't say that. Just like I know Milo's coming to campus Shannon, next it week. It goes further than offending somebody. It's not like, oh, you know, what the Nazi and the KKK did didn't just offend somebody. They actually hurt people. And so it's a it's a thin line between um, right, but the Supreme Court and Snyder party. versus the Phelps case made it clear that public speech can never be punished for simply being offensive. Just because you say something that is offensive does not mean that it's. I mean, it's wrong, yes, and it may hurt people's feelings, but you you can you can say it under the First Amendment, unless you we want to change that. As long as people have the right to speak on their beliefs of hate and racism we also as a society have the right to counter protest that exactly. and as long as we do it in peace and non-violent but that's not what we can people do are it. doing just when milo went to berkeley they they did the opposite that's a riot not a protest but they There's were protesting difference. him speaking on campus just because they did not agree with what he had to say I think but it that's comes not hate speech. They're not they they're not going out and you know. But they they did it wrong. They didn't hatred on a group right, of people. Right, but they didn't protest peacefully at all. They could have gone to a safe space we're on not that talking campus. About protesting, we're talking about hate speech. Right, but hate speech is again subjective. People don't agree with what Milo has to say, so he can't come speak on campus. I don't think hate speech is subjective. Neither there do is I. there is a clear difference definition. between what's the this definition? is wrong and this what is, is right. Hate speech, speech expressing hatred of a particular group of people. Except expressing hatred, but ex exactly. Of a particular group of people. Okay, so. Whether it's through gender, sexuality, race. Right, but race. that's their opinion. They are allowed to have that. Is it wrong? Absolutely. If I want to say white people are stupid, I think that they are this and that. It's my right to say that. You could agree and you couldn't. So I, I but I can still say it. I have the right under the Constitution. I can say it. Is, does it hurt people's feelings? Yes, but, and hate speech is wrong. Like I said, we can all agree it's wrong. I, I, as I said earlier, I think it's disgusting. We have so many problems in this world right now. People's houses burning down, it's all the, down, all the hurricanes happening, and people are still standing up bashing on people for their sexuality, skin color. However, it's their right. If they want to say that, it's under the freedom of speech, they can. Is it right? No. Unfortunately, we have a First Amendment, and and it, it will not not in a, not in all cases it's unfortunate, but in this particular case, nothing can be done to change the First Amendment. People have the right to say what they want. At the end of the day, it comes down to morals. And right, right now, and our I'm, country is all over the map with right. you know different beliefs, values, and morals. And you know who is to determine whose morals are Thank appropriate? You. Exactly. And not? Go to the South and listen to what they have to say. We wouldn't agree in California at all. 
right, about their views, but it's still their right. And just because we don't agree doesn't mean they don't have a right to say that. And I would rather live in a country where we do have that right. And I think we're fortunate enough to. So what do you guys foresee next week when Yiannopoulos comes to talk at the campus? I mean, I hope. I hope nothing gets violent. I know there are already clubs that are, you know, holding, um, you know, uh, not protests, but, you know, events, you know, for but that's more good. of a positive, exactly. you know, um, feel um, away from where the uh, speech is going to be taking place. But our, but our school cannot tell a Republican or a Democratic speaker that they cannot come to this campus because they don't agree with what they say. It goes both ways. That's why we need to be unanimous in this because, I mean... That's that's what I find. Just because we all don't agree or just because we all don't like Yiannopoulos, a lot of people are coming and they're paying to see him. People that don't go to this school. So and he has a right to come and speak. Yeah, I just hope that, you know, everyone is able to stay safe and respectful on Halloween night here at CSUF. Um. The Boy Scouts of America, or BSA, announced on October 12th that it will be admitting girls into their Cub Scout program for children aged 7 to 10. The change will start in 2018 and older girls will be admitted in 2019, enabling them to earn an Eagle Scout rank, which is the organization's highest honor. Michael Serbog, the BSA's chief scout executive, said that the, quote, values of scouting are important for both young men and women, end quote. But the Girl Scouts of the USA have opposed the plan, saying the move was put into place because of financial problems. Both organizations have had drops in membership in recent years, and the announcement is adding strain between the scout groups, each of which is more than a century old. Now, um, I have to ask, what do you think this means for the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, and how do you think this will change the experience um, the boys and girls will have? I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I know that they've been talking about conjoining or letting girls join the Boy Scouts. And between 2013 and 16, the Boy Scouts membership declined by 10%. So is it a financial issue? Maybe. Um, But in my opinion, I think we should just call it Scouts of America and let because what about the boys that want to join Girl Scouts now? So you're telling me, like, my son can't join the Girl Scouts, but my daughter can join the Boy Scouts? So I think they should revamp the whole thing and make it co-ed. And, you know, the Girl Scouts were actually opposing this decision. They said, quote, Girl Scouts is the biggest leadership organization in the world, created by an importance of all girls, girl-led, girl-friendly environment that Girl Scouts provides, which creates a free space for girls to learn and thrive, end quote. So this is a girl environment. This is where girls, girls, girls and boys are very different. And especially when you get into an older age, you have different issues and different concerns. So to a point, yeah, it should be co-ed and everybody should be nice and friendly with each other. But there comes a point where a girl needs to have her girl squad and her team to confide personal information with that guys simply wouldn't understand. So I can see why the Girl Scouts would be would be offended by this. Were any of you, either of you, in the Girl Scouts? No, I, I was in a co-ed. Oh, I was in a okay. co-ed Girl Scout Boy Scouts called Pathfinders, and it was very normal. You know, it was a small group that didn't really. Um, have issues but this but if an organization is specifically set for girls to have a safe space it should be just right that. but then they already but now allowing girls to join boy scouts is not fair to those boys that want to join the girl scouts it's like they they did it in one organization so are the girl scouts now going to allow boys to join by by the stance on the girl scouts it seems that they really are strict on who joins there. Not to say that different opinions may not change, but this is affecting the Girl Scouts financially because now that girls are allowed into um, Boy Scouts, that's going to affect their membership rates and their... um, Right. And the whole premise of Girl Scout, Boy Scout, Girl Scouts is supposed to turn girls into women. Boy Scouts are supposed to turn boys into men, but now we have girls joining Boy Scouts. So that's why this whole this whole thing. You know, I have me. no problem with them mixing, but when you set up an organization specifically for girls and specifically for guys, it's a reason they're set up that way. Both of them, right. if you ask me, Girl Scouts are better, 
just for the cookies. I know. Okay, yes. those cookies do not be. I know Boy Scouts sell favorite. popcorn, but it's not even <laughs> yeah. so, not even relevant. Know, but I mean, if it's for financial reasons, it, it, they're both going to be affected. Obviously, maybe coming up with I don't know. What do you guys think? What? Sh- how should they go about this? Yeah, like maybe having it separated until a certain age, you know, preteens, and then kind of making it co-ed after that because then girls and boys can go camping they can learn how to do this and that I mean I don't yeah Yeah. I I can see that go ahead Mm -hmm. no I was just gonna say that you know this issue it just kind of shows um that our country is becoming more progressive and you know this will allow our youth to decide you know who they identify themselves with and and I think that's great so it it almost brings up you know another issue I don't think they've said anything about LGBTQ issues affecting they this haven't, decision. But, but why and else would they, you know, well, why else would right, this but be? In, exactly. And in 2014, in 2014, Boy Scouts just started letting boys who were openly gay join. 2014, that's not long ago. Mm-hmm. So they just started that. It, it, for the simple reason that it, it's, it's a girl space, you know. It's a girl um, thing that females can take a part of right and I agree but then now it's kind of denotes it because that was supposed to be what what boy scouts was for for boys but then now it's changing so for girl scouts who's to say they won't change their mind or things won't change but it seems to me that what the organization of girl scouts has said is is valid you know I think there are certain issues that females can help younger girls with that um, guys in the Boy Scouts leadership just won't doesn't mean that's wrong or they shouldn't do that. But that's up to their organization and we'll just have to see how it unfolds. All right. Now we're turning to national news. On October 20th, Steve Bannon, the controversial former chief strategist to President Donald Trump, spoke at the California Republican Party's semi-annual convention. The speech was an effort to revitalize GOP support in the Golden State. Bannon suggested that Republican candidates advocate for ideas like the reduction of legal immigration and restriction of H-1B visas, which allow for hiring foreign professionals. Bannon promoted limiting these visas on the premise that it would allow, quote, the Hispanic and black kids who are U.S. citizens to be allowed success. Bannon also used the stage to criticize Senator John McCain and foreign President George W. Bush outside of the Anaheim Marriott, where the convention took place. About 100 protesters denounced Bannon's appearance. The Fullerton City Planning Commission voted 4-2 to two against the use of land for recreational marijuana use. The main goal was to allow recreational marijuana dispensaries citywide. California State Prop 64 was passed last year, which legalized the recreational use of marijuana, but not the sale of it. People will not be able to buy marijuana until stores are licensed. The state has until January 2018 to start issuing retail licensing. As of now, the state of California, it is legal to use, but not to buy without a medical card. The reason for the rejection vote in Fullerton was that there was not enough information presented. The city council is still open to a solution once details are found out. Now turning to campus news, the two bodies found in Joshua Tree National Park on October 15th were identified as missing hikers and former CSUF students, Rachel Nguyen, 20, and Joseph Orbeso, 22. The hikers were discovered under a tree with gunshot wounds. Authorities believe Orbeso shot and win, and then himself. The pair were found north of the Maze Loop Trail with no water and had appeared to be rationing their food. When authorities found the bodies, they saw that Orbeso had taken some of his clothes to wrap around Nguyen to keep her warm. A family member of Nguyen reportedly said that investigators believe it was a, quote, sympathetic murder-suicide, end quote, considering she had suffered a head injury. Nguyen and Orbeso from Orange County had been reported missing since July 28th. The third annual drag show took place on October 18th in the CSUF Student Housing Piazza. The event was co-organized by the Resident Student Association, RSA, and the LGBT Resource Center and was created in celebration of LGBT History Month. Exotica Erotica was one of the six Orange County queens who came out to join in the audience's cheers and encouragement. 
Rainbow confetti rained down on hundreds of students as they waved dollars at drag queens in glitzy and show-stopping costumes. The drag show serves as a community event each year, and the LGBT Resource Center on campus is established to uphold sexual orientation, romantic orientation, and gender identity. Well, that's all the time we have on today's episode of The Report. Stay tuned for more news, views, and info. I'm Shannon McCurcher. I'm Leslie Duarte. And I'm Alyssa Ruiz. Stay fresh, Fullerton. Mm.